All right, welcome everyone. And uh, the subject of our talk is uh, support for Postgres protocol in, in Envoy proxy. Next slide, please. So my name is Krzysztof Pakulski. I'm software engineer at Tetrate, and I also contribute to Envoy project. Hello, everyone. I'm Fabrizio Devais Melu. I'm a Postgres research and developer uh, for Congress company. The Congress company means on top of Postgres. I'm also a Postgres contributor for a long time. And this is my first contribution to Envoy project. So let's start with, uh, you know, for, with Envoy Proxy. This presentation will have several parts. Uh, so in the first part, we will look towards Postgres protocol from Envoy point of view. So this is a simple connection model. Uh, and the goal, you know, is connecting a client to the farm of this of server. So on the left side, we have a typical client or the application, and it really wants to connect to uh, databases and. Uh, Postgres really requires a TCP connection between the client and the server. So, you know, and that's what Envoy does. If you look at if you look at this picture, it's really simple configuration. It's just a TCP proxy, and it provides the connectivity between the client and the server. So we can use uh, uh, extensive backend features which are provided by by Envoy. So we can do a load balancing on the back end. We can do a health checking. We can detect that one of the nodes are behaving in a really weird way. So this is something we call outlier detector. Uh, and it works. So client, so we, we achieved what we wanted. We wanted to connect client and the server. Uh, you can also get some statistics, uh, but on a very gross level. So you will only see that the client connected to a database. And, and that's, that's all. Uh, you won't be able to see what was going inside of the of that session. So uh, TCP, uh, TCP stats will tell you how many TCP were open, TCP sessions were open, how many bytes were exchanged, but also an access log which will tell that, you know, pretty much describe a similar things. So you, you know that the client talked to a database, but you really know, you don't really know what was talking about. So in order to, to know what was going on inside of the session, you need one extra component in this picture. And this is, uh, you know, this is a Postgres uh, filter. Uh, one thing you have to mention right now that in order to achieve all these things we're talking about, uh, Postgres filter needs uh, access to a clear text protocol. So it cannot be encrypted. We'll talk about later on what we do when it's encrypted. But when I talk about, you know, this, assume that it has a clear text. So from the connectivity point of view, it's really nothing different. So client can still connect using TCP to the server. Uh, and we still use the extensive features of Envoy on the back end. So we can still use the load balancing, outlier detector, uh, health checking. <clears throat> but now all of a sudden, Envoy can tell us more about the, what's going on inside of the TCPC session. And this happens by introducing that extra filter, which is able to read the packet just before sending either to a data to the back end or either send back to the client. Uh, so now, we, we, it's not only that there is a TCP session, you know, which extends between the client and the server, but we can also look inside what kind of messages are exchanged between those, uh, the client and the server. So you're able to see how many selects there were, how many updates, inserts, errors. Uh, so it's not as a one long-lived TCP session, but uh, Postgres filter will know what was going on inside. So one thing I have to mention here that the sequence of Postgres filter and TCP proxy filter is established every time client establish a connection to a server. So like I said, it's a long lift and when it ends, uh, that uh, two filters are destroyed. That would be next slide, please. Okay, so let's see what's going on inside. So on the TCP level and the data delivery, they, you know, TCP windowing mechanism and also buffering on the network cards, they really completely not aware what's, you know, that their Postgres messages pass on top of these. So a filter receives just chunks of data and it has to make sense of this. So it, before we can, sp before the filter can start processing it, it needs to reassemble entire Postgres message. And when it receives the data, you know, uh, which was sent by, uh, by the client or the server, it has to see whether there is enough, whether the data contains one full uh, message. If it contains, that's all good. 
uh, we can immediately start processing. But in the other situation that can happen is that uh, that uh, the, the received uh, the received data does not contain a message. So it has to wait until the next data arrives in order to reassemble entire message. And that requires some buffering between uh, b uh, between the fragments as they arrived, either from client or either from the server on the on the opposite direction. So next slide, please. So here is a, a filter has a state. <clears throat> uh, uh, so it always starts in the initial state, uh, initial, and it stays in the state as long as the coder so-called likes the messages. So I'm saying like, so it's able to find the boundary when the one message ends and then when the next starts. And it can kind of make sense what's passing between the client and the server. And as long as it, the, the, the coder likes, we stay in the in, in sync state. There are two states, uh, there are two situations when uh, the coder can leave that state. So the first one state is, normal state, I'm saying there's no error and it's called an encrypted state. And it happens when client and the server negotiate an encrypted session. And basically it's encrypted and uh, filters say, hey, you know, it's, it's nothing I can do. I, and it's that basically starts passing this without looking inside, without doing any deep inspection. So the other uh, situation when the filter can live in sync state is when something unusual happens. So uh, either there was a corruption and the decoder says, you know, I don't really know what's going on here. And, um, and, and, and say, you know, I better start ignoring those messages. The other situation is when it can happen is that when administrator configures everything for Postgres, so there will be a Postgres filter, TCP filter, configures everything, but starts passing the traffic, which is not really Postgres. And the biggest danger here is that the filter really looks inside of the uh, Postgres message header. There is a four byte fields, which is uh, which indicates the length of the message. And as I said before, before we can start, a filter can start acting upon that message, it has to keep it in a memory. If this is corrupted and tells you some you know, outrageously large number, filter may try to allocate that man much memory and, and, can, and can run out of memory and the process will be killed. So by indicating and introducing out of sync state, we're trying to prevent that situation. Next slide, please, Fabrizio. So in addition um, to the producing statistics, the Postgres filter can produce a metadata. So let's uh, try to explain here what the metadata is. So uh, uh, this is a SQL database. So, you know, it, there is a, the, an, an SQL query passing in a messages could be quite complex and the really only database and SQL parser really understands this. So metadata is the way of describing a quite complex SQL query using just a few labels. And those labels might be whether this SQL you know, query is read operation, write operation, on which database, on which table, just using a three or four labels, we're able to describe it in a concise way what this operation is about. And that metadata is attached to a request and it, it travels as data tra um, travel, it travels with data as it passes different filters. So if we put another filter like RBAC, we can program RBAC to reject or stop certain operations you know, from being sent. So you may program it would be a good simple example would be you can program it that it only routes reads operation on a specific table and stop all the right operations right at this moment. So you kind of, the program access control right at the network level, even before it reaches a database. There probably might be uh, other examples of using metadata. That's uh, this one is simple enough to understand. So that would be it from Envoy's point of view. Thank you. So thank you, Christopher. Now let's talk a little bit about PostgreSQL. Uh, here, the idea is not to talk about a lot of great features, but uh, give you a clear picture of current status of development side of Postgres, you know. So Postgres has more than 30 years of development. Uh, 
it's fully open source since the beginning. And we have a Postgres license, a specific license based on BSD license. It's totally driven by community. I mean, uh, driven by PostgreSQL global development group. There are no single single company driving uh, the development. Nowadays, we have 29 core committers working for different companies. And nowadays, we have a thousand of people around the world testing and reporting issues all the day. Uh, and this, and here is uh, the result of so many years of mature development. If you see in this picture, uh, a lot of great use cases. Uh, Apple, Skype, Instagram, Twitch, Spotify, IMDb, and there are a lot of uh, missing, other great missing use cases uh, in these images like Lyft, TripAdvisor, MailChimp, GitLab, Atlassian, and uh, a lot of government in different scales use Postgres today you know so it's a great great open source database uh, we often call the most advanced open source database in the world uh, on the postgres community side so let's talk more now about uh, what we did here for uh, envoy network uh, postgres network filter for envoy uh, let's start talking about the protocol versions uh, today uh, the Postgres wire format, it's a very stable and mature protocol uh, without major changes since uh, 23, uh, last 17 years without any major change. So uh, since the 7.4 version, it's the same version of the protocol. And the server still supports the protocol, the first version of the protocol, you know, so there are a lot of other uh, derived projects, derived Postgres projects that can benefit of this uh, Envoy network filter. Uh, I can say uh, Headshift from Amazon uh, was built on top of Postgres many years ago. Uh, Aurora, RDS, uh, Yugabyte DB, Cockroach DB. Uh, green plan and there are a lot of uh, projects uh, out there that implement the Postgres wire format. So you you can benefit for this uh, Envoy network filter. So about the protocol, uh, there are a, a name called Phoebe frame format. Phoebe is a common term in Postgres world. That means front end and back end. It's same like a client and server or upstream and downstream, you know? And basically we have two types of packages that traffic between the client and the server. There are a startup package and the regular package. package. Uh, and the, uh, the startup package, uh, there are three fields. The first field is the, um, the length of the message. The second field is the protocol version, and there are a payload with other uh, needed information with parameters for start the connection. And a regular package, we have a uh, first field is a tag, which is one byte, one character, the length of the message, and a payload with the uh, necessary data uh, about the, the message. And there are a special startup package called SSL negotiation that is the same as a startup package, but the difference is when we start SSL negotiation, we send to server a dummy uh, protocol version. So Postgres uh, start the uh, SSL negotiation using this special startup package has uh, we will see more in the next slides. So here we, we can see uh, the message flow for a new connection. On the left side is for an unencrypted connection, and the right side 
is for an encrypted connection. So here we send a startup package, server responds without the request, it's okay. And uh, optionally, you can send a password and the server responds with a lot of parameter status, backend key data, and finish reading for query that uh, send, uh, say to client, hey client, I'm waiting for you and you can send the next command, a query, a parse message, depending on simple or extended protocol. And the, the difference when we start a encrypted connection is because we send a SSL negotiation, it's a dummy uh, startup package, and the server will respond yes or no if you, if the server is able to start a TLS, if you have config, um, if you have the enough configuration, certificates, and whatever. And uh, if we, the response is S, we will have we start uh, the SSL handshake. And after that, the message flow will be the same as an encrypted connection. You know, and here uh, it's other other part of the protocol when we negotiate with the server to, for example, run a simple query. Okay, in Postgres wire protocol, basically there are two different ways to interact with the server. There are a simple protocol and an extended protocol that was introduced introduced uh, in version 3.0 70 years ago. Okay, uh, here I will just explain the simple protocol because the idea will be the same for extended. Uh, the only difference is on extended we process the Parse, parse message, and in simple, we process the query message. As you can see here, the client send a query message to the server, and the server get this message with uh, SQL statement inside, and do all the processing, I mean, the parser, uh, rewrite query, uh, planning, and execute, and then start to respond to the client. And the first response will be the row description that contains all information about the data set. I mean, the name of the fields, the length of the fields, data types, type align, and a lot of infor uh, metadata about the result set. And after that, start streaming all rows fetched uh, by, by query. You know, and at the end of streaming data, the server response send back to the client a special message called command complete. And the command complete, the uh, how in the code, uh, co uh, the, the Postgres network filter, the decoding part of the Postgres network filter. Uh, it's around of this this uh, command complete. Of course, there are a lot of different parts there uh, to filter and uh, whatever. But here is the trick to the code, the wire protocol, because at the end of the execution of uh, execution of the some SQL statement, Postgres response uh, the back end of the server responds back to the client with a tag about what uh, happens. Uh, in the the query, I mean, uh, I run a select, I insert, delete, unpedate, uh, explicit explicit uh, transaction command, begin, commit, DDL, create table, and whatever. And uh, here you can see uh, from Postgres source code there are a long command tag list there with all command tags. Okay. Oh, so uh, let's start with the demonstration part of the, the presentation. And uh, you, you expect uh, some result uh, like this. Uh, we are able to create uh, to some dashboards in Grafana to get the metrics. Uh, and uh, this image, you have uh, several uh, graphics, interesting graphics without touch to the Postgres. I mean, zero configuration on Postgres side, just by decoding 
the query format, we can expose those metrics on voice side. It will create uh, uh, will not create a lot of uh, overhead on Postgres side because another way to uh, to get this information in running some queries to uh, against the Postgres server. Requirement is very simple for this demonstration. Just Git, Docker, and Docker Compose. You know, the architecture is very simple. There are five containers here, and uh, there are uh, a special container that generates some traffic. I mean, create some uh, dummy workload. We are using here some house-made scripts and the PG bench. It's a tool, a Postgres tool for benchmark. And uh, those, the, this traffic is sent to Envoy, and Envoy send the to another container with Postgres and Prometheus to grab to scrap the metrics from Envoy and Grafana to collect uh, to expose metrics in to create some dashboards. So now we have uh, all five containers. The most important container in this case is. Envoy, for sure. Here we are in the debugging, debugging mode. And here you can see some interesting information. For example, here. Here we have a front-end message. Query, send a simple query to the back-end. I mean this SQL statement. And the back-end response with the whole description, and after that, uh, several data holes sending back the data to the client. No, and the, here there are a lot of, uh, and he, another important, important thing is command complete. Here, this is the, mm, the, the, the tricky that we did for expose metrics, uh, drilling down, select uh, a different kind of statement, drilling down for a different kind of statement, because the Postgres response at the end of the the, the data do, that data data row is streaming this tag for the command. And here, what we are doing on the Envoy side is increase a specific metric about select statement when the command completes arrive, uh, pass uh, through the, the network filter, you know? Ah, the other important thing is here, here we have a, a script to generate some traffic. It's very, very simple. We do a lot of random to run some benchmarks and run in, within different protocols, you know? A simple, extended, prepared. So we can generate a lot of different traffic in this uh, small uh, demonstration to generate some graph. Here is our Grafana running. And we have a special dashboard with all uh, graphs about the traffic. TPS, transactions per second, hidden and writes, uh, different types of statements, front-end and back-end. Uh, messages and number of sessions per second. Okay, so, so let's 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 talk about it. What uh, what we plan for the future? So um, we want to do a few things, and some of them are uh, already under active development. So the first one is a necessary termination, and we said that in order to produce all those statistics, we need an access to. Uh, to clear text packet, but what happens if you have a requirement that the client has to, you know, traverse, traverse a certain portion of your network in an encrypted fashion? So we want to terminate SSL right at the Envoy level. So traffic between the client and Envoy is going to be encrypted, and then Envoy can actually look what's inside of the packet. So it's under active development. We also want to have a better SQL parsing. The current parsing we use, it's not sufficient in all cases. So we want to switch to a better one. Uh, uh, like I said before, and Fabrizio was demonstrating here, we can provide all different statistics in an aggregated way, but they are also a requirement that if some clients are using one database and the other clients are using the other, but they share network, we want to uh, basically is provide those statistics per database. So when you talk to Promiscuous and we extract data, 
we just want to somehow divide it and say that's for database A, that's for database B. Uh, and you know, we also want to maybe introduce a routing based on query. And that's I said when I was talking about the metadata, that metadata can be used later on during the processing. Maybe you want to route some queries to a certain host because it's a write operation and maybe to a different host because it's a read operation. So what's going on in a community? So there is a dedicated Envoy Slack. Uh, there is a bunch of channels for development users. And there is one very specific uh, dedicated to Envoy, uh, sorry, to Postgres development. Uh, so there is a hash here. And all the issues which are raised by users or by developers, they, uh, they labeled as a Postgres issue. And uh, here is a link how you can find them in Envoy project. So I guess they would be all. Thank you on my side. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. No, there's absolutely no questions. So I guess we <sighs> everything super clear. Or everybody is super. <laughs> yeah, that, but uh, there are one catch on the one question. There are, is there any plan way to use this to support connection pooling? Mm. Yeah, that would be on the back end. It would be yeah. something similar to PG pool, I guess. Yeah. PG bouncer to replace PG bouncer. Mm. PG bouncer is more. It's a more specific. Postgres pooling because on PG Bouncer we have uh, different pooling modes. Uh, I mean, we have uh, the session pooling, so the full pooling mode that was shipped by the full. And uh, when uh, you leave your session, you can you use the session for another session, but is is driven by sessions. But we have two more specific pooling modes and more aggressive pooling modes. Uh, we have a transaction mode. I mean, when a transaction finish, the connection uh, is returned back to the pool and uh, we can create uh, a, a, a really funnel between the, a lot of connections using just one session. You know? uh, we didn't plan to do nothing about that on the invoice side yet. I don't know if it's possible. Uh, maybe yes. I don't know, Chris. You are the guy. Of, you are the boy guy. No. Uh, okay. okay. So <laughs> to, to answer the, specifically the question whether there is any plan. So actually, no. It's not in the plan. Uh, we, it, it it popped up a few times, but we didn't make any fine, you know, concrete decision and. Uh, uh, but 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 Envoy maintains some uh, you know open session on the back end, so maybe we can leverage that. Definitely, we have to look at the, you know very technicalities uh, how we yeah. can leverage things which already exist. Um, yeah. So there is a question uh, about the cockroach DB. So all the pro all the databases which support wire protocol, which is compatible with Postgres, you can benefit from this filter. So Fabrizio mentioned a long list of that, and I think. Cockroach was one of those. Uh, Yuga Byte yeah. would be another one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, even Redshift will work. Uh, Redshift was built on top of Postgres 8 version. So at that time, we already have the current protocol version. Is this uh, well, web assembly? No, no, it's purely C++. No, no. Uh, there is a directory. So if you go into the source code of uh, of Envoy, you will see different extensions and network filters, and you will find the Postgres uh, Postgres filter over there. There will be a bunch of others like MySQL. Uh, I think Redis would be so it's easy to find. Yeah. Yeah. These just shared the uh, the link. Yeah. Right? Thanks, Jim. All right. So, all right. Great. Thank you very much for listening Great. to our presentation. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.